Hi guys, welcome back to another one of my videos here at Miss Medic. Today I'm talking about the presentation of COPD. COPD is a really common condition and it frequently appears in MCQs and OSCEs. What I'm going to cover today is the pathophysiology, the presentation and investigations. In the next video I will talk about the management of COPD or to give it its full title, Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. So without further ado, let's get started. So COPD affects roughly 1.2 million people in the UK and it is defined as a slowly progressive disease which causes airflow obstruction. Now the biggest risk factor for COPD is smoking and you will notice that many patients on the ward and in clinics that you see with COPD have been smoking for many many years. So cigarette smoke will activate neutrophils in the lungs which secrete protease. These will break down the lungs and cause large air filled spaces known as bullae. In normal lungs there are enzymes like alpha 1 antitrypsin which stops the proteases damaging the lungs. However in smokers the increased proteases will outweigh the enzymes so there is breakdown of lungs. As the lungs are broken down much of the alveoli is destroyed. And as we all know the alveoli is responsible for gas exchange. Therefore patients with COPD will have a low TLCO or low lung transfer capacity. And keep this in mind as this commonly creeps up in exams. In COPD there will be hypertrophy and increases in the number of goblet cells. And goblet cells produce mucus. They secrete it and in COPD there will be large amounts of mucus. People with COPD will have a productive cough. And this large amount of mucus will make it easier for bacteria to grow. So COPD patients may have a large number of infections. And one particular bacteria which tends to affect patients with COPD is Haemophilus influenza. When breathing out COPD patients their airways will tend to collapse and this can lead to air trapping so the lungs will be hyperinflated and we can see this on chest x-rays. So now on to the signs and the symptoms. So patients with COPD will be short of breath and it's useful to quantify the shortness of breath using the MRC scale. And as an OSCE examiner myself, if you're presenting a patient in your OSCEs and um, summarizing their complaint to the examiner, it's useful to mention the MRC scale. So grade one on this scale means that the patients will be breathless on exertion. Grade two means the patient will be breathless when we're walking up a slight hill. Grade three means the patient will be breathless on flat ground. Grade four, they will be breathless on walking about 100 meters. And grade five is the most severe. And this is when the patient is breathless on dressing and undressing. So as you can imagine, when a patient is very short of breath, they will have increased work of breathing. They may use accessory muscles and they may develop cyanosis. If COPD progresses, patients may develop signs of right-sided heart failure. They may have peripheral edema, hypomegaly and a right ventricular heave. On listening to their chest, you may hear a wheeze. So how should you investigate? So you should suspect COPD in any patient over 40 with breathlessness 
and a history of cigarette smoking. And you must do spirometry in all patients you suspect to have COPD. Now, by definition, COPD is an obstructive disorder. So it should have a FEV1, FVC ratio of 70% or less. And you really need to commit this to memory because it's a, a fact that's tested over and over again in exams. Now, unlike asthma, which is also an obstructive disorder, COPD is irreversible. And you must test to prove this. So you should check the FEV1, FVC ratio after giving a SABA. And this is um, one of the drugs used to treat COPD, which we will be discussing in depth in my next video on the management of COPD. Also, you should do lung, lung function tests, which will show increased residual volume in the lungs. Because remember, we talked about the airways collapsing and air trapping in the lungs. Patients with COPD also commonly desaturate. So it's very useful to do an ABG to check the PaO2 and the PaCO2. A chest x-ray is recommended in all patients presenting with COPD. You are likely to see hyperinflation and we can see this simply by counting the anterior ribs. So there will be greater than six anterior ribs visible in someone with a hyperinflated lung. And the diaphragms might, or the hemidiaphragms might be flat. And if there's a lot of bullae, the lungs may appear very dark and very black. If there are complications of COPD, such as raised pulmonary hypertension and right side heart failure, on a chest x-ray you may even see prominent pulmonary vasculature. It is useful to do an ECG to see if a patient with COPD has any right axis deviation. In a young patient, COPD may not be caused by smoking, but a problem in an enzyme known as alpha-1 antitrypsin. So it is useful to test for this condition. You should also do an FBC, UNE and CRP, as patients with COPD often develop polycytothemia, which is an uh, increased um, red blood cell count um, due to hypoxia. So the key take home messages are that COPD is an irreversible obstructive lung condition, that the common presentation is shortness of breath, wheeze, infections and productive cough and that key investigations include blood tests, ABG, spirometry, ECG and chest x-ray. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up as it really helps the channel and subscribe so that you can keep up to date with the new videos and my next video will be one where I discuss the management of COPD. Hope to see you all again but for now goodbye.